Hello everyone, I'm James Milan and welcome to this inaugural episode of Check It Out! What's up at the library? Um, this is a new series that we are kind of re-inaugurating in a sense because we've, we've done series with the library before. Uh, but there's always stuff going on, as we all know, lots of stuff going on at our libraries. And so we want to have a chance to check in regularly with library staff. And in this case, we are starting right at the top with the director of our libraries, um, Andrea Nikolai, who is joining me, and Arlington's preeminent historian, uh, Richard Duffy, is also here. And why are we here? Well, uh, Richard deserves to be here as as our uh, as our expert historian, not only because this is a historic occasion right here uh, with the inauguration of this series, but also and especially because uh, of the rollout of a brand new resource at the library. As of April 4th, you will be able to check out the historical Arlington newspapers. Uh, all the newspapers in Arlington or local newspapers going back to the 1870s, have been digitized uh, right through 2005. That's what we're here to talk about today. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Both Thank of you, you. James. Really appreciate it. You know, we met briefly uh, yesterday to kind of discuss what we're going to talk about today and the excitement that you both have about this new uh, this new resource uh, was very palpable. So let's start there. Tell us what, what it is that uh, has you so excited about this. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, so we are excited about this resource because it, it really creates much better access to the history of Arlington. Um, before this resource, people would have to make time to go to the microfilm in the library, and it was a very painstaking process. And with this resource, people will be able to, anywhere in the world, log on and check out the advocate going back, as you say, all the way back to 1871. So it's just a phenomenal um, new access to a, a collection that I think people will be really interested in, in searching and discovering. And how about for you? Richard? Well, speaking of discovery, one of the things that's difficult with local history in general and local newspapers in particular is sometimes, unless you know exactly where you're going, unless you have the exact date in mind, it's difficult to discover information because it's either thinly indexed or not indexed at all. And having the opportunity to perform a search just as you would with, with any search engine and to have specific pages, many of them in many cases, of the historical newspapers come up is incredibly powerful. It, it gives people uh, the information they're looking for and very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So we are going to show people a little bit later in this segment. We'll, we'll kind of, you know, do a little demo and give some provide some tips and tricks, et cetera. But to begin with, I would just like to, to get a better sense um, of how did this all come about? How long has it been in gestation and, you know, and how long did it take to create what was involved? So if, we, if I can start by asking you just to kind of give us the, the, the overall picture here. Sure, sure. So this is something that a lot of libraries have done recently. Um, we have been wanting to do this project for a while now, years. <laughs> um, but it really took permission from the publisher, for one thing, um, Gannett, aka oh, formerly Gatehouse Media, um, granted us permission to not only digitize up through 2005, but make it available remotely so that people wouldn't have to be in the library mm -hmm. to access the resource. And that was really important to us. So gaining that permission, in addition to um, through the generosity of the of, of Richard, <laughs> um, through the Arlington Libraries Foundation, we were um, grant, granted um, funds to do the project. So very grateful to Richard for that, um, because without that grant, it um, it would have probably taken a little time to come up with the funding to do this project. Mm -hmm. So. Um, really wonderful set of coincidences and generosity, and um, that's how it got off the ground. Mm -hmm. And Richard, obviously, you, you, you know, Andrea has already mentioned that you are uh, due our grat gratitude for your generosity, but I 
as I understand it, you also were intrinsically involved in the actual process. It, it was bold self-interest. What can I say? <laughs> this, uh, I, I'd like to say I know a lot about Arlington, but not enough. So uh, this certainly, for me, gives me some, some new opportunities to learn uh, some new things. But what I'm really excited about, I work with a lot of people in the course of uh, people attending lectures or programs or down at the Arlington Historical Society um, who have a tremendous amount of interest in, um, in what went on dur during their own lifetimes. Uh, you hear about people through Facebook groups who want to know something. And now we're able to turn over to them uh, the newspapers, just as in the past the library has digitized Arlington High School yearbooks and town annual reports. So this continues that trend of accessibility uh, to Arlington's past by the library. You know, I'm going to just introduce an aside here, and I, I, I beg your indulgence, uh, because as you said, you know a lot about Arlington's history, mm -hmm. even if you don't yet know as much as you want to. Um, you had mentioned to me, uh, again, as part of our earlier conversations, that you are from Winchester. Yes, so all the way from just, Winchester. <laughs> yes, all the way from Winchester. I'm just curious, what, what made you turn to the town next to the town that you grew up in to devote so much of your time and energy to, you know, really plumbing the depths of our history? I have loved local history since the, the first elementary school, third grade unit on local history that you get. Uh, maybe they do it in fourth grade now, but, mm -hmm. but since very young childhood, um, I've been interested in the subject matter. And actually, no matter where I travel in the world, it is the local that draws my attention. There's something uh, very special about learning about the, the everyday and how special it is. So when I bought my first home in Arlington and, yeah. and settled here, uh, that was a logical next step for me. Got it. So your adopted community right next to your na native community, you yeah. decided to go all in on And that. Dr. Now, <laughs> perhaps the most renowned pediatrician of Arlington, he was my pediatrician. So I have, I have those kind of Arlington <laughs> roots to spare. Good enough. All right, back onto, to, onto the topic. Excuse the digression. So what do you guys think are, uh, you know, to start talking about um, the, it's not a website, it's a, again, it's a resource. Um, to start talking about this though, what do you think are just a couple of the coolest things as far as, as you are concerned about, you know, beyond what you've already mentioned? Well, for one thing, kids will be able to use this resource a lot more easily than they are able to use the microfilm in the library. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the microfilm has been, you know, we, it's not a user-friendly way to look at media. Um, you have to get the reel, you have to get a librarian's help to to spool it through the machine, and it's, it's a process. And mm -hmm. so it's a barrier. And it presents a barrier, especially for young people, because young people, let's face it, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a very digital world, um, I feel. Yeah, so anyway, um, so it's, it's just going to be so much more um, simple for a, a student at, at Arlington High or at any, of, any school or homeschool to access Arlington's history for any number of projects. And um, in particular, with um, you know, the range of focus, the range of subjects that um, have to do with Arlington's history, the history of, of race in Arlington. I mean, these are subjects that Arlingtonians are deeply interested in and that young people are especially interested in. And I think that uncovering that history through this resource will be really exciting for a lot of, a lot of students in particular. You know, I'm really glad that you cited uh, that it's the removal of, of a barrier um, that is, you know, part of what you think is really cool here because um, again, even in coming up with the name of this series, check it out, uh, I thought, wow, that represents the essential process of the library um, and also a process that we have all seen, all of us here in Arlington, over the last number of years and especially post, you know, the, uh, post the, the uh, incursion of the pandemic, um, how our libraries are devoted to removing barriers around checking books out, for instance, there are, or books and other materials. There are so many ways in which you can do that now, and it's become so much more convenient. Yeah, and ironically, it was kind of the pandemic, um, the, the closure that kind of allowed us to focus on a project like this, um, which required, you know, 
removing the microfilm from the collection for a while. And anyway, so it's yeah, well said. Um, access is is key, and uh, you know there are there were there have been enough barriers <laughs> in the last couple of years. Right. We we are not interested in barriers. We we want to remove them. So yes, absolutely. This is, and you don't even need a library card. You don't even need to be a member of the of the Minuteman Library Network in order to access this resource. Mm -hmm. It's just a URL through our website, and that's it. And it's just such a beautiful simple process. Yes, uh, you know, uh, and you may expand upon this if you if you wish, uh, Richard, but you had referred to it as giving people keys to the car, right? Just just make yeah. it as easy as possible, right in the comfort of your living room, wherever you are, mm -hmm. you can access. This. And anybody can start driving right away. There, there are not too many uh, no, lessons. No underage although, driver problem. Although right. I know that Andrea and her team have prepared some great tools that she'll mention. Um, to help acquaint people with uh, with the capabilities, because uh, just a moment ago I was I was doing a search and Andrea was sitting next to me. She goes, "Well, you know, you can search this way more efficiently." So we're not we're we're not we can't let our librarians go uh, just because we have this tool. In order to make the most of it, uh, there are some things to to know about it. All right. Well, actually, talking about the librarians, that that's a good segue to the next thing I wanted to ask you about, which is focusing really on who it is that you see getting particular benefit or making particularly great use of this new resource. Um, and I, I, let's just start with the librarians. How is this going to change uh, the re research uh, librarian's job, et cetera? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So librarians care about the patron experience. And so just for the simple reason that it'll be easier to show people how to access history, um, you know, without the steps involved with microfilm, um, it frees up the time of the user. And that's a really critical core value of librarianship. So we, we always want to be saving people time and energy if we can. So the librarians are thrilled. In particular, the local history librarian is thrilled. Our local history librarian, Stephen Prochet, he's rather new. He's been instrumental in learning this resource, preparing um, some support materials to help people learn how to use it. Um, and all of that will be on our website. But um, I mean, he in particular <laughs> will be getting a lot of requests for, for example, obituaries or um, town records or you know just things things that people request that have to do with local history. And his job is just going to be so much. He's going to be able to deliver so much more quickly and um, and richly, I guess, mm -hmm. um, as a result of this this being available. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, who did you, who did you have in mind? Well, you, you know, there's a there's the information piece that's that's so critical uh, for the learning of history. But I don't want to neglect the entertainment piece. Just as we have nonfiction and fiction in the library, there's a lot of enjoyment to be had in these newspapers. Someone could uh, enter the date parameters of the month they were born, and they can actually read the newspaper page by page. They don't need any search terms besides the date mm -hmm. um, to to go in and see what was going on, whether it was uh, their own birth announcement, whether it might be um, what was on sale that week, what people were eating, what cars they were driving on a very local level. So if you were born in uh, Sims Hospital in 1945, uh, you have a real treat waiting for you because your parents may not have saved that newspaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, on that topic, you guys gave me the opportunity to play around a little bit with this uh, with this resource um, over the last 24 hours, and I was happily did so. And, and among other things, what I did was put in some very prominent dates, uh, and you know, like December 8th of uh, 1941, for instance, um, and just kind of looking at what the local coverage was um, and reaction was to dates that we're all familiar with because they're of global significance. Again, just a really interesting way to for me to spend a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, as much entertainment uh, as it was, inform you know, informative. Yeah. And it's a, it was it was quite lovely. So. Yeah. Recommendation from from me. People sure. are going to love it. <laughs> um, so speaking of which, let's <clears throat> let's uh, let's kind of play with this a little bit. Sure. You know, let's show people what it is that they can do. Because just a reminder, what we're talking about is basically everything that you could access on microfilm and still can. We'll talk about that in, uh, in a little bit too. 
Everything you can access on microfilm in terms of all of the images, the actual images of the pages of the papers, um, are now available just at the touch of a, of a button on your, on your computer. So show us what that looks like. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to be the patron because I am the patron. And you can see the, the landing page right here, nice, nice and clean. What's nice uh, about the landing page is you can glance down. People, there's not really a need for people generally to search by title, but this shows you the many different newspapers and, and how long they published, and, and that's some good information to keep in mind. Yeah. But I'm going to perform a quick search here, and it, it defaults to all of the words. That can give you far too many hits. So as Andrea just showed me, click exact phrase, and you don't need to use quotation marks. So I'm going to pick a, uh, um, a neighborhood in Arlington, uh, which is just on the south side of Route 2, and it's called Arlmont. It'd be good if I spelled that right. Mm -hmm. Arlmont Village. And I happen to know when it went up, so I'm going to um, put some parameters. But let's say I know it was built in the 1930s. A good thing to do is to put 1929 to 1941, because that gives you some margin for error there. Mm -hmm. And then I just click Discover, and let's see what comes up. And I'm just going to pick the very first hit. And it doesn't come from the Arlington Advocate. It comes from the Arlington News, um, which some people may have said, I didn't even know we had That's right. such a yeah, newspaper. Just, just even looking at the list of papers that we've had yeah. is interesting. So I glance down, I see Armand Village, so I see that this is an advertisement. And, and advertisements are, tend to be very entertaining because of the language they use. <laughs> and so they're talking about Armand Village, and the line that really jumps out at me is, have the houses you have been looking at been approved by good housekeeping with its well-known rigid requirements? <laughs> so uh, they're beautifully furnished and decorated by Good housekeeping. So the information... That's what they mean by good housekeeping seal of approval. It's the seal of approval right? that it's not only for products, it was also for houses in Arlington. Uh -huh. But what this does is I say, okay, this has given me an advertisement. And if I look in the upper right corner, there seems to be a news article, which is going to have more information of interest to me. And I'm going to jump over to here using this arrow, and it's going to take a second to load. And we're going to get the front page of the Arlington News. That. And just as if you're, you're reading the newspaper there, and I'm on a mission to look for um, Armand, so there's the main article right there. But over here, just by glancing a little bit to the left or the right, I see construction of streets started. Um, I can see dine at Cawford's. What's Cawford's? Well, gosh, it's uh, it's a restaurant right here in Arlington, and I can see what the the roast stuffed chicken dinner was seventy five <laughs> cents, and uh, and th yeah. things such as that. You can um, you can get down mm -hmm. into everybody's favorite uh, stores that they remember, or stores their parents uh, spoke about. The new nineteen thirty eight radios that were on display. So there's lots of fun and informative stuff, and this is just based off of that. Simple search, Armand Village, mm -hmm. and I and I got all of this bonus material. Just, just wonderful stuff there, and uh, yeah. So I mean, you you were mentioning that <clears throat> Andrea had steered you towards the exact phrase option. Uh, let's you know because people who are tuned in are actually looking at what they're going to see. What are a couple of other tips or, or or tricks that you'd like to share with folks uh, to make their experience even better? Well. There are filters available. So if you only want to search the Arlington Advocate and you perform your search, um, let's say you were to do that Arlmont Village search, once you get your list of results on the left-hand side, you'll, you'll see the filtering area where you can filter by, I believe it's year, it's um, well, let's, newspaper. Let's, let's go ahead and look at that. All right. To reset my... Oh no, not the year. <laughs> the 12, year 1291. Well, yeah, we, that, we didn't we didn't that, get the rights to go back that. That 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 was my next digitization request. Actually, whether whether we might be digitizing some. Yeah, the Magna Carta, and et cetera. Okay, so I'll do this, and I'm going to again do that exact phrase, and I'm going to discover. Okay, so there's the Arlington News. Now, one of two things is you could just keep scrolling down. The Arlington News obviously gave this big coverage, but I could just click Arlington Advocate over here and um, 
Do I have, is that what I'm doing? Am I yes. doing that right? Good. Okay, so, and this is coming up here. Um, this is so what the Arrington Advocate it. had to say about it. Mm -hmm. And the Arrington Advocate just happened to be, a, a, in its day, a more subdued publication. The Arrington News was more of a popular press. Um, but here we see something that's interesting in 1936. Debaters wax hot over Armand Village project. Uh, indulge in personalities and bitter language before the new Arlington Heights development gets sewer and water. So <laughs> you can you can get the turmoil, not only the good housekeeping seal of approval, but you can get the agony on the way of earning that seal, and and so easily. And uh, and you just you can look at other stuff while you're here. People are invariably going to do that unless someone is in a real hurry. They need they need to know uh, they need grandpa and grandma's wedding picture and they need to get out of there. But otherwise, they're going to linger and they're going to be tremendously uh, rewarded. And but, I'm noting that the that the the format there of the front page, you know, it's just the format alone uh, to, kind of tells you that you're in a different era, mm -hmm. uh, not just the the nature of the content and the language, but just so many little articles um, right there on the front page. Yeah. Uh, again, just learning stuff as we go here. Yeah, and for additional tips and tricks, of course, you'll be able to go to the library website and uh, our local history librarian, Stephen, has put together a YouTube video. It's about eight minutes long and it shows you everything you need to know about how to do a search. Um, he's also going to be conducting an um, in-person training. So I think that's April 12th, if I'm not mistaken. It's in the library events calendar. Um, there's also a, a Meet the Local History Librarian event happening later in April. So um, lots of ways to learn this new collection and um, just looking forward to supporting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let, with, the, with the few minutes that we have left, I'd like to ask just a, a couple of more questions. One is, We've, we've mentioned various times that this is uh, basically, it's not replacing, but it is an, an, an alternative way to access what is available on microfilm. Um, so a couple of things about that. One is um, this database right now only goes through, um, or this resource only goes through 2005. And, but I understand that people can access material in the Advocate and other places since 2005, mm -hmm. they just have to do it in a different way. Is that right? Yeah, there's a link actually on the homepage of the new resource. Um, there's a link to the place where people can find full text from 2005 through the present, and that's a, a database called Newsbank. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we still digitize, uh, sorry, we still microfilm the editions of the Arlington Advocate up through the present. So, um, I mean, obviously this year is still ongoing, but we have microfilm reels for the advocate from 2000 from 1871 all the way up to 2021 and you know we'll continue to collect microfilm and have it as a a way of um, having some redundancy and and options for digitizing in the future so right so for those purists or technophobes out there just it's nice to know that microfilm microfilm continues to exist and will and be used and be available in the library um, that leads me to my second question, and this is more directed to you, Richard. I understand that, um, again, as I alluded to earlier, um, there is your personal generosity in terms of helping to make the funding available to do this, uh, but there's also your the, the, the labor intensity of what it is that you did as part of this project. So my understanding is you went through every reel of microfilm. I did, I did indeed. I, I guess if you want to be a, a, a hands-on uh, uh, donor, I was literally a hands-on donor. Uh, during the pandemic, before the library was, was properly open, everything had been moved into what I would have to call the library safe room, a designated space up in the, up in the attic of the library. So all of the filing cabinets were moved in there and it was a one person operation and I went through each and every reel because there were some reels that had missing issues or cuts that were in really poor condition. So a dimension of this project was to make sure we had the very cleanest uh, and complete copies of the microfilms in order to produce the best results. Because there are going to be artifacts and lines and that can inhibit people sometimes discovering a word. So the cleaner content you have that's scanned the more likely you are to find what you're looking for. So it was very important from that uh, perspective because it's an investment and you want to get it right 
the first time. It's, it's not, it's not going to be redone in a couple more years. Mm -hmm. This is this is an enduring project. Yeah, and I, you know, I I'm just going to make a guess here, but thinking back to the uh, the homepage for uh, the Arl the historical Arlington newspapers. Um, I believe that in that listing right there, there it is. Yep. So we've got, looks like uh, approximately 140,000 pages uh, there, uh, as I just kind of do a quick calculation. So that's what you went through, it was a, well, more or less? I mean, well, I really wasn't reading, although it was very tempting to not stop and read <laughs> sure every you. word, but then the project would be done some year in the 2030s. Um, mm -hmm. But what I would end up doing was going through and paying attention to um, uh, just the general yes. condition. And sure. sometimes you knew uh, within the first, uh, I might get as far as March of the given year, and I might be able to say, okay, all I'm going to check for now is issue completeness, mm -hmm. because the condition is generally good. Sometimes you could, you'd stop, it would be July, I'd say, oh, we're missing the July something issue. So we actually had some old physical newspapers uh, that were bound uh, and we took those physical newspapers and those were microfilmed and then scanned in order to be included here. So we actually added missing issues of the advocate mm. to the uh, database that would have been, been lost forever. So that was a great discovery. Yeah, and I, I really want to thank you, Richard, for doing all of that legwork on this collection. Um, yeah, it was a tremendous effort, not something that we prob that we could have supported just, we were actually between local history librarians when this was yes. happening. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, for that reason, and I mean, just the, yeah, the volunteer effort was, yeah, well, it's tremendous. So thank you, Richard. Yeah, and I, and I, I've been I, involved I, with the library's foundation for mm -hmm. for since its inception. So I'm I'm now been kicked upstairs to the board of advisors. So so this has a very personal um, uh, satisfaction for me, uh, having served for many years as a member of the foundation. I got to assume so because you know I understand you didn't read everything, but nonetheless eyes on that many pages just to be able again to confirm that 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 the state of them was satisfactory many artificial tears were shed <laughs> <laughs> well, i'll leave it at that yeah i, I mean at, at some point i'd love to know just how many you know person hours duffy hours uh that added up to but uh there was, you there know was let's say it was significant sweat, sweat equity that's all right it was it was great and it actually wasn't uh since since i love the material you know it was uh it was a pain pleasure kind right, of dynamic right, going right. on. Certainly a passion yes, project, passion, no doubt about, no doubt about it. And um, you know, speaking of which, uh, we're we're drawing to a close for this uh, this this first episode of Check It Out. And um, let me just ask you, you know, what do you? I don't know what 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 are what are your hopes as 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 this begins to to, to roll out and people become aware of it, et cetera? Do you do you have any you know specific uh, I do. You'd like to share. Good. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I, I want people who've never used a library resource online to use this resource. Like, mm -hmm. I want somebody who's preparing a speech for a retirement at, you know, the, I don't know, at, a, at an organization in town to look at this collection as a way to help them do what they need to do to honor their coworker, or their colleague, to honor their, their parent or grandparent in a in a meaningful way for a ceremony. I mean, there are so many ways that someone could really use this resource to, to create a meaningful life experience in some realm that I can't even think about, mm -hmm. that I can't even think of, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that every Arlingtonian finds something to discover and be surprised and delighted or just learn from this um, in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would add to that, um, I'll just pick a topic that continues to be discussed and debated with a lot of misinformation um, being generated uh, almost 50 years later, and that's the extension of the red, red line, line. Mm -hmm. that was planned to uh, terminate at one point in Arlington Center, then Arlington Heights, and go out to Bedford, and there was a lot of ink spilled in the 1970s during uh, that time. And this will uh, allow me, if people are, are insisting on a certain point, to point them to a resource and say, well, read it for yourself or, or, or look at it for yourself, rather than why be based on an as told to, well, I heard this from my neighbor who lived here then. Mm -hmm. um, no, acquaint yourself with what, the, what was being said uh, and done.
And along that same lines, you know, along that same line, the idea of how journalism was done at that era and the words that were used, the the way that things were framed and mm -hmm. who was framing them. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are all important details to look at when it comes to history. Yep. And it does seem like, you know, it goes without saying that we, we are in an era of massive and, uh, and, and incredibly concerning misinformation and disinformation uh, all around us. So the idea that you could, again, in both, both of the things you cited, whether somebody's preparing a speech to honor somebody else or, uh, you know, in the way that you talked about it, Richard, it's going to be accurate. Right. You're going to be able to go right to the source and find out what somebody what was said about that thing at that time. Right. And it's right there in yeah. front of you. So, uh, again, that's the work of libraries and librarians in many ways, the work of historians yeah. as well. So I'm so glad that both of you could join me for this first uh, episode in this new series and that we talked about something such so exciting. Thank um, you. So thank you for the work that you've done on it already, and let's all enjoy uh, the rollout. So just to remind you, we're talking about April 4th and uh, as the, uh, the, the debut of uh, our historical Arlington newspapers, this uh, new resource that, again, puts all local history going back 150 years right at your fingertips. So take advantage. I've been speaking with Richard Duffy and with Andrea Nikolai. Um, thanks again to both of you for being here. Thank you for being here as well. I'm James Milan. This is Check It Out. We'll see you next time.